welcome back. Black money was a powerful poll-setting agenda in 2014 Lok Sabha election that aided the Modi wave to push for the BJP-led NDA to power. In the run-up to the 2019 election, the issue was missing from the poll pitch of the party, not completely, but to a large extent. None uh, nonetheless, it won the election with a much bigger mandate. Despite uh, bringing in a new law, the black money undisclosed foreign income and assets and imposition of Tax Act 2015 and then demonetization. According to a report released during the first term of the Modi government, data revealed that the amount of black money being stashed away on foreign shores has risen by 50%. Union Finance Minister at the time, Piyush Goyal, he trashed that report. He informed the parliament in July 2018 that Indian deposits in Swiss banks fell by 34.5% in 2017 and by 80% since the Modi government came to power in 2014. He cited data from the global body of central banks, the Bank for International Settlements. Today's development may be the first real movement in the government's fight against black money. India has received the first tranche of uh, Swiss bank account details of its residents under the automatic information exchange framework between India and Switzerland. This is for the first time that India has received such details from Switzerland under the AEOI framework. Under this framework, the information is exchanged on financial accounts that are active at present along with the bank accounts that had been closed during 2018. The next exchange will take place in September next year. And this exchange is governed by strict confidentiality clauses and the FTA officials refuse to disclose specific details on the number of accounts or about the quantum of financial assets associated with the accounts of Indian clients in Swiss banks. What does this mean? Does this bring us one step closer in the fight against corruption? The action rolling after years would many have already closed their accounts in Switzerland? Lots of questions. We're going to open this up for debate. But first, my colleague Rishabh, he caught up with Congress's spokesperson, Supriya Srinathe, earlier today. The Congress party slamming the Modi government, saying that all of these moves are purely farcical. Take a listen. We have with us Supriya Srinathe from Congress party to react on this. Ma'am, as per government, it's a big victory for them when it comes to black money. What's your reaction? This is still source-based information. I'm going to reserve my comments on this because I would like to hear from the government officially on what sort of data this is. Uh, I would just like to remind that, uh, you know, this, is, this has been work in progress. Uh, this has not been made by this government alone. This has been work in progress and the Congress party is committed to unearthing black money. Unlike the BJP, which talks about unearthing black money through various means, but those amount to nothing. So there is one thing, talk, but they refuse to walk the talk. I mean, if just a rude reminder, uh, the whole demonetization of 2016 was also to unearth black money. I would like to ask this government, what sort of black money was unearthed? Supriya, if we talk about uh, black money, you know, uh, BJP has always been upfront claiming that Congress happens to be the bed where black money started from, and now they're undoing wrongs that have happened in the last seven decades. How do you see please, that? Please point me in one direction of the wrong that has been undone. The biggest wrong that was undone uh, was a very Mohammed bin Tughlaq-like approach to say that 88, 86 seven years currency will be demonetized. What did we achieve out of that? The first principle, according to the Prime Minister when he did it, was to unearth black money. 99.9% .9 of the money made it made its way back into the uh, banking system. It's, it's back with the RBI. So what were you trying to achieve? It's one thing to make noise. It's one thing to talk about it. But this is farce. This is sheer hypocrisy. And I think at one level, I completely disagree with their approach towards black money. It doesn't happen because you're going to shout from the rooftops. What Fold back, all right. In fact, uh, coming back, let's start the debate. Uh, Pooja Suri, BJP spokesperson here in the studio. Tanmay Ghosh, uh, he's a political analyst. Sumit Peer, also political analyst. And Dr. Sharad Kohli, he is an economist. Thank you all very much for being with me here. Pooja Suri, let's start with you first. You heard the Congress spokesperson over there. She called demonetization a very toglaki uh, sort of a move coming in from the BJP. Says it yielded no result whatsoever how would you respond is this move going to uh, get us one step closer when it comes to a crackdown on black money sana first of all i would um, you know ask all um, all of you in fact uh, sitting here also that uh, it is an appreciable uh, achievement you know um, and this is the first time 
in Indian um, history, you know, when uh, we are getting some good information, substantial information from Switzerland regarding the um, uh, bank accounts, the names, addresses and the balance uh, details. So, um, uh, you know, we should uh, take it as a big achievement rather than uh, criticizing uh, by the Congress, uh, uh, you know, uh, party. Congress had has not done anything, rather they are the creator of all this corruption, you know, which they have done for last seven decades. So now, uh, since Modi government had, uh, it had been the first agenda since 2014 to fight against... No, but uh, questions are, you know, we, we knew that this data will be shared by Switzerland. We knew all of these processes from the beginning, but the fact that it's taken too long and now, even now, this is just the first step. There's a lot that's likely to happen. Details will be shared, they'll be vetted. And when suspect accounts are found, they're going to be further vetted. And then, you know, leg legal cases are going to follow. And there are not just uh, black money stashed away in just Swiss bank accounts. It's in the other tax havens as well. So what does this mean right now? Uh, well, uh, Sana, as I told you that this is the first time uh, that we are, uh, you know, getting such uh, good information from the Swiss uh, bank. Uh, from Switzerland, um, uh, you know, this AEOI, hmm. that is uh, automatic um, right. exchange uh, hmm. of information. Hmm. And this is according to the global standards. So you cannot, uh, you know, it, all these uh, uh, processes take time. You, it's not a, uh, you know, a magical wand that you, you know, move it and the okay. information okay. comes. Okay. And you go, uh, one more point I would yes. like to say hmm. since uh, the Swiss bank holders uh, who have uh, or who had stashed the money there, uh, you know, they are not small people, they are big fish. And uh, why Congress would be saying farcical? Because uh, they are the ones who are going to face the tremors very okay, soon. Okay, okay. Tanmoy Ghosh, please respond to Pooja Suri. Uh, she's raised a couple of points saying that, you know, of course, this is uh, about influential people. This is a long drawn process as per international standards. But have we, had we started celebrating too early when it comes to the government's crackdown on black money and thereby hitting corruption? Sana, first, uh, let me take the opportunity to wish all of you because Durga Puja is happening here. So, Shubha Navomi to all. Secondly, thank you. Thank you. And same to you. When we are talking about black money, I am still waiting in this puja. While I am waiting for entire nation is waiting for last five years to get 15 lakhs of amount, 15 lakh rupees of uh, each of us uh, account. So that still we are uh, awaiting. Hmm. Initially, I thought. Initially, I thought when you invited me for debate that probably today our honourable prime minister is going to announce that 15 lakh will be credited in my account and tomorrow morning. I'll be very much happy, but that not, that kind of things didn't happen, and we just came to know some leaks. That's precisely what we are talking about. Hmm. Our government is getting some kind of uh, leak with the name of details after so many <coughs> Pandora kind of things, which our honourable prime minister hmm. is hmm. from last five years, and the result is nothing basically. If there is anything related to black money, the same thing we uh, heard regarding when the demonetization happened. That time also our Honorable Prime Minister said that uh, all the black money will be taken out. But okay, it okay. So you think this is not happening anytime yeah. soon? Dr. Sharad K. Kohli, you know, we've heard conflicting reports. I cited uh, a report that was released saying that the amount, in fact, stashed abroad has increased 50 percent. Uh, the government presented data in the parliament saying that, you know, uh, uh, presenting a very positive outlook. Which side of the argument do you support and how big is this development that's happened today? This is just about Switzerland. All of this pretty much on expected lines. See, Sana, uh, being an economist, I think I'll, I'll present a very fair view of how things are going to be in the, the perspective. Hmm. Uh, the good thing is I support Pooja in saying the good thing is that, <coughs> you know, you know, the information has started pouring in, which is a never before. It, I mean, Switzerland was known for its super secrecy or, you know, hmm. you know, you probably stash information on Moon or Venus where it can never come. The bank secrecy, which is what Switzerland was known for. So the good thing is that the information has started pouring in. And the bad in this is, I mean, not exactly bad, I will call it as a limitation rather is 
that <coughs> the cat was belled some time ago. So if you see the, the, the recent development, it says the accounts which were closed uh, during 2018 and thereafter. Hmm. So they and of course the accounts which are being maintained as of now. Right. But when the cat was belled in 2018, some of the birds already flew. They must right, have flown right. out. That's a very valid so, point. Which so, I wanted to you know, you know yes. so I'm not sure. Now, see, after so much noise is being made about Swiss accounts, I think only somebody who's very foolish will continue to do all the shady deals <laughs> which we are referring to right now. So the, the big question now is how many of these accounts, out of the information which has come in, are really going to be useful? That's, yes. that's, that's the million dollar question right now that can we really dig out anything out of these let's not forget sana that there are a lot of regular dealings in switzerland That's where the right. indian businessmen and companies they also have regular so relationships so only a very Caribbean. small percentage could actually be a probably that are suspect, probably right? probably mm. because the cat was belled long ago mm. and there are there are a lot of genuine dealers with european union and switzerland for that matter who who have genuine business dealing and they have to maintain account so simply having an account in switzerland is by no means being stamped with somebody having black yes. money or whatever. Yes. Let's not forget Switzerland is a country by itself. And around, you know, it has it has disseminated information to about 75 odd countries. Hmm. And I'm told about 3.1 million account information has been shared. That's and right. that too has been assimilated from over 7,500 odd trusts, banks, financial institutions. Hmm. So there's been a lot of effort which has gone into putting this together. Now it's up to the government. Of course, the confidential confidentiality clause remains. Tana, right. Let's not forget, which means the names of these guys are cannot never going to be in the public domain, right. and you cannot make them public. So we will have to we will have to wait and see as to what eventually comes out of this information. That hmm. is that is right now. Right, right. That is that is crossing my mind as to what is finally going to come out of this. So in essence, Sumit Peer, this is about finding a needle in a haystack, right? Uh, but that too, this is just one haystack that we're talking about and perhaps just one needle. Uh, so there's really lots to do for India when it comes to a real, you know, overall a 360 crackdown on, uh, you know, illegal money, black money that's stashed away in many, many tax havens. Uh, how are you looking at this? How much of a real success will this be given that this is now going to take another couple of years? In fact, if you want to go ahead uh, on a case by case and get into the specifics. I think, Sanaji, the first thing is, do you walk the talk or not? The first thing, when Modi ji came to power, there was a black money voluntary scheme announced when his people declared 7,000 crores, more than a billion dollars. Now, Indians had the highest second, now we're number two in the terms of black money stash in Singapore and tech sevens. There are this tech, tech sevens in Lancaster, we have Cyprus, we have Channel Islands, so a lot of them in the world. But Switzerland was considered to be a fortress which could never be breached. You know, it was impossible to breach. And after a long sustained efforts of Modi ji, for last five years, this government, the, we know, what do we know? So now? But we India know is not the only it. country that's getting no, this information. No. Yes, uh, given that, given that the Indian government yes. after Modi uh, went after black money in Switzerland and you started the, negotiations, the is, started talks with the Swiss authorities. Fine. Pointing but is, India is the not the only is, country. Is, yes. The, remember hmm. the fact we had number two highest number of accounts status, you know, uh, Switzerland. What Kohli Saab rightly said, all the money in Switzerland is not black. It might be legitimate money as well. But if you look at the semantics of it, if you look at the mathematics of it, if we are number two there, so there's substantial amount of black money which is stashed here. So even if people have closed the accounts in 2018, we'll know who are these people, what are their names, where did the money go. If people have taken out the money, we'll know how much of money is taken out by whom. If money is still there, how much of money is there? If it is transferred, to where it is transferred? And the most important thing is, Sanaji, if we can get Switzerland, why not Cyprus? Why not Lancaster? Why not Channel Islands? We, it is just a beginning because when you begin with something, what we have shown to these people who have stashed the money in Texas was that if we want, we mean business, we'll come after you and get everything what you are hiding out of India. The agony is, you have a country like Singapore, mm. where there's a lot of money is stashed in Singapore also. You know, they are lending at 1%. There's a mm. country like Thailand which is running at 1.75% and NPFCs in India, which are cash out and our banking system is cash out, we are lending as bad as 23%. Now, if we are lending at 23%, how would you expect MSPs and the businesses to come up? So, uh, all the money coming back into the system will bring down the interest rates, which will be a very good news for the Indian economy as such. I don't know, will we ever get 15 lakhs? But that still does not mean that we're going to get back the black money stashed away abroad. Tanmoy Ghosh, uh, do you want to counter what Sumit Peer is saying? It's the beginning. You know, it's a humble 
uh, I was in Zurich just a uh, few months back, and I was discussing with some of the bankers. And I, whatever I understood, that okay, the Swiss bank is sharing the details with our government, but whether we can just dispose it in front of public or whether we can take any actions, that is, there is a confidentiality law. What Dr. Kohli was saying, that is very important. So, some getting some uh, information, okay. So, yeah, just for example, you, we all of us know that Vijay Malia has done something, Nirav Modi has done something, but what we are doing? We cannot do anything till we have right intention or otherwise it will be basically a political gimmick that we are showing to public. See, this is the So, you are actually is. questioning the government's intent, Tanmoy Ghosh. You are saying the government yeah, never really yeah. wants to get back if the black you, money. The government have, does not, have, is not really bothered about the cracking down on corruption, but it's all talk. Sumit so Peer says the government is uh, walking the talk. I don't know what will okay, be the outcome, okay. but there Please is come no and put question the intention. Sana, uh, first of all, I would like to say you that... You know, having said that, Pooja, before you start, let's just reiterate, automatic exchange, the AEOI does not mean that we're definitely getting the black money that's stashed uh, outside of the yes. country's show. There's going to be cases, there goes, uh, there's going to be prosecution, it's a long, drawn process. And again, we're talking about just one tax haven, Pooja. My question is, unless you take the first step, how would you win the battle? Hmm. And the battle is very clear. The battle is against the black money, which is not, which has not started today, but it had started long way back when um, Modi government had come in 2014. I mean, I cannot understand, uh, 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 you know, they asking such a question that uh, they are so, uh, you know, doubtful about the intention of Modi government. But one step has to be taken. And this but is what about Dr. The, Sharad Kohli, is, what he was saying, you know, the government started talking about this in 2013. The AEOI yes. came up only recently. And what about those account holders who've actually packed up their bags, shut down their accounts in Switzerland and parked their money in other tax havens? What about those insane. accounts? Sana, at least whatever, whatever good we can do, you know, at least that that thing has been done, and the act, the uh, you know the action for that had been consistent. I mean, you cannot say that this action ha was taken just this year because it also includes the accounts which were there uh, in 2018, uh, which were closed and which are still there. Hmm. So I mean, it's not that it started in 2018. We cannot specify the year, but we should uh, appreciate that the move, uh, the battle against corruption, right. okay, the black okay. money had started way back. Right, and Dr. which is Sharad only Kohli, by Modi coming. government. Right. What about Congress for last seven hmm. decades? Have they done something? In fact, they have done the most corruption. Right. They are the ones who had started with this concept of Swiss banks and stuff like that. And the others were there to follow. And now they again, when something good is coming up, instead right. of giving the credit, you cannot discredit the Modi right. government right. move. Well, unfortunately, no, fact, we don't uh, have anybody from the uh, Congress no, on no, the in panel. Fact, but no, yes, I'm, Dr. I'm not Shana trying Kuhli. to counter. I think I'll continue to maintain my stance hmm. as an economist, Sana. Hmm. And I would like our viewers to know the substance of it. See, we need to give credit to the government. There's no doubt about that. Hmm. And I, I was waiting for Pooja to say, but I'm sure this, this will cross her mind, that the tax returns now, which hmm. you file in India, they've got a separate schedule hmm. where you're supposed to be mentioning all the assets held abroad. This wasn't the case before. Okay. So when we, when you're talking of other places like Channel Islands, mm -hmm. Bahamas, Bermudas, and Cayman so it Islands, you know all those. To list yes, it's now mandatory. So if details. you don't do it, you right. are held liable under the Black Money Act, the hmm. Foreign Black Money Act. So I think that has been a big deterrent right. as far as the people are concerned, which wasn't there before. That's hmm. a, so I think it's a good move. But however, however, uh, without belittling the the, hmm. the, uh, the the move which has recently been taken about Switzerland. I would appreciate, let's see, with each country, there is a treaty which India signs. So I think wherever they're able to crack in with, with these places also. Right. I think, I think it's a good move. It's a mm. good beginning. At least Switzerland's reputation right. as a tax haven or as a ta black money tax haven, shall I say, mm. is now deeply tainted. It right. will no more be a safe haven for. But then no, no, tapping the other places, Sana, has no, to be no, no, done. No, no, no. Because people will start finding other 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 right. places to park. With respect to Switzerland, Sumit Peer, now the ball is clearly in the government's court. What we need is speedy action, speedy follow-up. Just receiving information is not enough, clearly. So if you the know, government I, has I, remained committed, it must follow that up, back that up with speedy action. Otherwise, all of this absolutely. is going to mean nothing, literally, nothing. Sumit Peer. Absolutely. Peer. You know, I'll, 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 I'll add on to what Kohli Saab said. Basically, in our income tax returns, you have to declare if you have any assets out of India. If they are legitimate access, no questions asked. 
If you have not declared your assets, Sanaji, by default, by law, if there's an account, let's say, money discovered in my or your name, if we have not declared it, by default, term, there's black money the day it is discovered because we have not declared it. That's point number one. And secondly, when even people are kind of packing, moving their money from one account to another, it's a lot of money. You cannot put it in a suitcase, withdraw cash from an ATM and go it and go it to a blanket scene or a Cypress and do it. So the money has to be transferred. The moment you transfer the money out, you also get those details. So the good thing is that the money is tracked. You have declared or not declared, it's tracked. Where it has gone, it's tracked. Where it has moved, it's tracked. Who has moved it, when he or she has moved it, and how much it has moved, it has tracked. And by default, it is you have not declared it. It is already accounted as what you call an untaxed, non-taxable money or your black money for that the sake of convenience. So it's a great move. You know, we have to hmm. start from somewhere. We cannot get all right. tax accounts in one go. But absolutely. It's, it's but you know, how many how many times can we keep uh, when when news reports came in? India is going to uh, take this up with other countries. Then uh, we we're going to be signing an AEOI with Switzerland. Then we're going to get information from Switzerland. We are talking about all of this, and it's been quite some time. Now we are waiting for some action. Tanmoy Ghosh, do you believe that the government is actually walking the talk, or you continue to maintain your stance that all of this? is mere eyewash because remember yes. we have roped in we've got special agreements with countries when it comes to sharing of information and there has been a constant effort or so it seems from the Modi government side starting 2014. Sana, we, we have we have live example where we know the defaulter's name like Nirav Modi, Vijay Malia but after knowing everything whether mm. our government could have done anything so far there is nothing fruitful uh, work from the right. part of and and now just we are getting some information and as as whatever i have uh, known from the switzerland part whenever i was discussing with the bankers and all those things just they are sharing some details but hmm. it doesn't and these details is not only sharing with indian government but right. also but those are loan default I, cases you know, and in case of vijay malia he is ready to pay back all the dues so, pooja yeah, very yeah, quickly yeah, and then i'll close yeah, with you uh, dr yeah, sharad kohli yeah. Ah, in cases where we know the name of, of the person responsible, we are not able to get the person yeah. back because of cases, the legal battle that is involved. What's to suggest that this is going to be easy? As easy as it, as it looks like, as it sounds like when we start talking about bringing black money. Tanmoy Ghosh, please, I'm running out of time. Pooja, 30 seconds. Sana, uh, yes. I would say this is the first tangible uh, move, you know. This is the first time that something is actually happening, you know. I mean, it is not only in the conversation. Right. The Switzerland government is providing you the substantial information. Right. right. So we should all appreciate and welcome. So not just on paper, but there's finally some action. Whether there'll be a follow-up, what does the government need to do now? Well, government, government needs to speed up the cases yeah. and, and immediately levy the tax or the penalty. Hmm. But very important, very quickly, hmm. uh, Sana, I would say that the means by which this money moved out also needs to be investigated. Right. Because how did this money reach from here to the destination is a huge question mark. It was cash transferred via Hawala route right. or was it taken through the banks? How was this move? I think if we and tap those the source channels here, need to be blocked. Yes, if the channels right. are blocked, That's a very I think important you hit point. the pro problem. On well, we'll see how this plays out. Absolutely running out of time. Thank you so much, Tanmoy, Pooja, Sumit Peer and Dr. Kohli. That's it then on this edition of uh, Talking India Head. I'm Sana Khan. Thanks for watching.